Rinpoche, just now you mentioned that uh, uh, the importance of empowerment. Mm -hmm. What if for Vajrayana follower, they receive many empowerment from different uh, guru, whether familiar with them or not familiar with them. If there is Samaya following that, what would be your advice? Uh, those who have uh, received already, I don't want to disappoint them. So, what is the, the, the solution for them? They must keep a good relationship with Samaya with them because it's already received. And uh, Samaya is uh, important. There's a, definitely every empowerment involved in uh, Samayas. There's no Vajrayana empowerments without Samaya. Every empowerment comes with Samaya. Vajrayana's empowerment is the same as a vow. In the Theravada, you become a monk, you take a vow. In the Mahayana, you take a Bodhicitta vow, then you become a uh, Mahayana's practitioner. In the Vajrayana, you take empowerment, you become a Vajrayana practitioner. That's a Vajrayana vow. So every, each time you take a empowerment, there is a vow. And vow is always linked with the deity as well as the, particularly with the master. So master and student uh, vow, there is involvement. Those who have received must consider one of the teacher. Respect, not criticizing, sizing, and uh, whatever uh, the samayas that uh, one must learn and must keep it. And in case some uh, samayas are not properly kept, best way is to recite Doja Samba Mantra. And Vajrayana samayas are slightly different from you know other Theravada and Mahayana. It's uh, easy to break. It's very sensitive. And also it's much more easier to fulfill. So recitation of Doja Semba Mantra, doing so Gana Chakra Puja, Fire Puja, these are all the methods of fulfilling broken Samayas. So best way is not to keep too long. Or by knowing, oh I must I have uh, broken the Samaya, one must immediately realize, it, as soon as realized, within a shortened, possible shortest period, must fulfill all, clear those broken samayas by recitation of Dojya Samba Mantra particularly. And uh, if possible, if that has ever happened, then must confess to the master. And there are a lot of samaya also, master must kept also. So there are master samaya, student samaya, like that. Then uh, those who have not received must never go not knowing master. The lineage, his root guru, his qualification. These are far more important than, you know, sometimes I see in Malaysia, people say, oh, I am Kagyu, must not go to this, I am Ima, must not go to that. That's not important in Tibetan Buddhism. You can go to any lineage master, as long as the master is qualified, practice, have a lineage, that's less important than the sect. Then the master's his own qualification. But today, if it's in your own lineage, you just go after any master, whether it's qualified or not. You know, that's, that's a, I think it's a problem. Because if the master is not qualified, he may not be able to keep the samadhi. Or maybe he is not capable to transfer the empowerments. Maybe he may not have the uh, lineage properly. So in that case, not only is it inappropriate or incomplete, but they become an obstacle. Obstacle for master, obstacle for student. Even that sort of master give empowerment, the student will practice, student will be short life, sick, never obtain the city they're supposed to be uh, obtained in this lifetime. And the life to come, according to Tantrayana, both master and student will go in the not right rebirth, so to speak. So in the Vajrayana I said again and again, must qualify, the master must be qualified. For example, myself, I have a Nyingma master, I have a Kakyu master, I have a uh, Sakya master. It doesn't bother me what limit. What bothers me is whether he is qualified 
you see gray, you see it has a limit. That's important. That's what one must change.